Good morning everyone. In this video, we're going to look at the load report concept, which comes under the capacity management. So the load report uh, shows you the future capacity requirements based on the released and the planned orders. So whenever you have a question or anything you want to calculate pertaining to load report, we will always start by calculating the requirements or the capacity requirements for the released orders as well as for the planned orders then we'll compare this on periodic basis against the available capacity and by comparing the required capacity based on released and the planned orders with the available capacity we can say if your work center is underloaded or the overloaded right and as we discussed in class if there's the overloading which means the load is more than uh, the rated capacity in that case we will plan for overtime we'll look into some of the other aspects such as moving your jobs on a different period so that we can try to create a balance right so in order to go through this uh, we will start by calculating the standard hours required for lease orders as well as for the planned orders right so at this point what we have in table number one we are given information on the released orders as well as the planned orders. In column where you have the order quantities, we are given the setup time and the run time per piece, right? So let's get the uh, total hours required for the order number 222, which is the released order in week 20. In this case, I have setup time as zero and our total run time is going to be 0 0.2 standard hours per piece and we're producing 100 pieces right so in total i have 20 st hours 20 standard hours right similarly as we go ahead for the piece number two we have a setup time of 1.5 hours and again 0 0.2 standard hours and 150 hours Per piece, sorry 150 pieces in total right so that will give us 31.5 standard hours right as we apply this further with the planned orders so where the planned order number 444 has a setup time of three hours so three hours setup time plus 0 0.25 into uh we want to produce 200 pieces so i got it as 53 standard hours right and as we go further, we have, as we solve this particular one, so we have 2.5 plus 0 0.15 into 300 pieces, right? So in total, we have here 47.5 standard hours, right? So as you can see here, we have two released orders, which are here, we calculate total time required for the released orders, and we have two planned orders. So let's sum all these up to get the total time, right? The total time we have 152.0 standard hours, right? So in order to uh, process all the released and the planned orders in week 20, we need 120, 52, sorry, 152 standard hours. So similarly, you're given the requirements for week 21. You have again two planned orders. Uh, and two released orders. So we'll calculate the total time required with respect to each order and the total time for all the orders, right? So I'm gonna just going to pause myself here for a minute so that you guys can do the calculations and then you can compare your responses. If you have given it a go, if you have done the calculation, you should get 21.4 standard hours for order number 222, 23.6 for order number 777, then we have planned order which is 444, 101 standard hours, and finally we have order number 555, in which case you should get 19 standard hours. Right. In total, we have 165 standard hours. So once we got the standard hour requirements based on the release orders and the planned orders, the next thing is 
to transfer this information to your load report, right? So your load report, which is provided to you in the worksheet is partially filled. So you're given with the rated capacity, which is the rated capacity for the next five weeks, starting from week 20 to week 24. The rated capacity 140 standard hours is available throughout the next four, five weeks. And you're partially given with the information on released orders and the planned orders. Or did we get this information? You're going to follow the same process what we did earlier with the table for week 20 and week 21, right? So let's transfer the information. So the total time required for the released orders for week 20, which is here, 20 plus 31.5. So I have 51.5. Right. Similarly, the plant load or the plant orders 53 plus 47.5. So, which should give you 100.5. So, in total, we have 152 as total load. Right. So similarly, let's transfer the information for week 21. So, we have 45 plus 120, which is going to give us 165. Right. Let's calculate the total load for the coming weeks. So we have 130 here, 120, and 125, right? So as you can kind of add these up and you will get the total load based on the release orders, total load based on the planned orders, and 692 and 700 here, right? And the most important thing is that once you got the total load, which is in row number four, and you already have the rated capacity, from here we can calculate over or the under capacity. So the over capacity means that the work center is overloaded, which means we have more load than the available capacity. Under capacity means the work center is underloaded. So in this case, we are representing the over capacity in brackets. So the total load is 152 and minus 140. So I have 12 uh, over capacity, right? So I need 12 more standard hours in order to satisfy the demand for week 20. Similarly, as we move further, we need 24 hours more, right? To satisfy the demand because the load is 165 and the rated capacity is 140. As we move further, we have under load, or we have, sorry, under capacity, which means we have 10 extra hours available in week 22. There will be 20 extra hours in week 33. And finally, we have 15 extra hours available in week 24, right? So from here, as you kind of add all these values up, right? So you should get eight in total as the under capacity, right? So which means we have eight extra hours available based on these five weeks, right? So how, how did we get it? So when you get the total, we have minus 12, minus 25, plus 10, plus 20, plus 15, right? So when you have the under capacity, these are the positive values because you have the excessive capacity available during these periods. When it is over capacity, these values are negative. So as you kind of solve this, you should get the value as eight, right? So you have eight extra hours based on the, these five weeks, right? But when we look into the individual weeks or the individual periods, so the first two weeks, we have the over, uh, over capacity, so which means the work centers are overloaded. And here we have the under capacity, right? So work centers are underloaded. And from here, you can look into different things, for example, can I shift some of the productions to week 22, week 23, so that we can satisfy the requirements here? Or in certain cases, you may already have safety stock or the inventories which are built up to, to satisfy the requirements for the weeks when we have a low capacity, right? We don't have enough capacity. So those are some of the things that you look into in order to satisfy the overall requirements. So that's all about the load report. So in a nutshell, the load report allows you to compare uh, the total load against the rated capacity so that you can look into the various policies and procedures to, to uh, eliminate the gap between uh, the rated and the total load.
so if you have any questions please feel free to reach me out but give it a go at your at your own so that you know where you're making mistakes uh, thank you very much everyone and have a good day